your defensive coach looking at other defenses. You know, I think it's a great way to get better in the off season. And I think, uh, you know, I think you should always pick out what are some of the best teams out there, whatever you're trying to do, and go through all their film and make cut-ups. And uh, you know, the NFL stuff, you can get it through NFL Game Pass. I know at the, you know, the high school, small college level, sometimes it can be tough getting, getting college film. So you know, if, if you want, just let me know. I have a, a ton of FBS film out there I could send you. But uh, you know, let's get into it. I think first of all, you know, studying another team is just a, it's a great way just to get better. You know, I think you know most of you guys being coaches, you're telling your guys to, to get in the weight room, get out in the field in the off season, and, and work on their craft. And you know, if you're telling them that, telling them to try to get better, then I think as a coach, you know, from a leadership perspective, you have to be doing the same thing. And I think uh, you know, even though you're you're a coach and you're teaching the game, you still have to be a student of the game. You know, one thing that John Gordon says: before you can lead, you have to you have to listen and learn first. I think no matter how much you know, there's always there's always more out there. You can always learn more. And then I think it helps you because you prepare yourself for situations before they arise. You know, if you're if you've never seen like the, the double flex defense that Coach Slowey is talking about, if you've never played against that, but if you've seen it on film and you've seen what's worked and what hasn't worked against it, then you have an idea of how to attack it once it comes up in the game. You know, maybe you have a certain type of player that you've never had on your team but you've seen how another team has used that, a similar type player, then you have an idea of how to put that guy in the best situation possible. And then like I said, I think you, you gain empirical evidence on what works and what doesn't. And I think it's the best way to generate new ideas on you know, strategy, new, new tactics, new plays. If you just pull up the, the whiteboard or pen and paper and just try to draw up new stuff, you're probably not gonna come up with much, but if you just watch a bunch of film, like I guarantee you, you're gonna get some pretty good ideas. So here's a quote from uh, General James Mattis, who's a renowned reader. They said he has over 3,000 books in his personal library. He says, you stay teachable most by reading books, by reading what other people went through. I can't tell you the number of times I looked down at what was going on on the ground or I was engaged in a fight somewhere, and I knew within a couple of minutes how I was gonna screw up the enemy. And I knew it because I'd done so much reading. I knew what I was going to do because I'd seen other similar situations in the reading. I knew I'd had been dealt with successfully or unsuccessfully. Ultimately, a real understanding of history means that we face nothing new under the sun. You know, when he's reading, we're talking about watching film, but it's the same thing. We're looking at the history of our field. So I just want to show an example here, kind of how this film study can help you generate explosive plays. So this first play here, this is North Dakota State in 2015. You go jet motion, play action, they're running four verticals, getting the half back on the, on the wheel route here. I mean, it's cover one look. Hit up for a big play. Now, fast forward two years later, the Chiefs and Andy Reid's staff are studying that film when Carson Wentz is coming to the draft. They see that play, they put it in, and you know, the Patriots, a big man coverage team. It's a little bit of adaptation off of it. This time, the halfback's running the seam. But again, it's four verticals with the halfback in a vertical route off jet motion. And the reason they got this play is because they saw another team run it on film. They say, hey, this is a good play against cover one, and then they put it in, drain, generate a big play to help them, help them win this game. Here's the next week. New England, they get beat on it. They put it in the next game. Same thing here, cover one from New Orleans. Half back up the seam on jet motion. And now, two weeks later, the Rams put in the same thing. Here's where the cover three look from Dallas, but you know, because they saw it on film, it gave them the idea. So now I thought about it and said, hey, this could work against what we're going to see from Dallas. Jet motion pulls up the flat and hook the fender. Now you got a halfback running the scene. And again, all these explosive plays are happening because they're studying what's happening around the league. They're seeing what's working for other teams. And then you can generate explosive based off that. So now transitioning in, I'm going to talk about the, the LA Rams offense and my film study on them and some of the, the big things I took away from that. So, uh, if you guys are interested, wrote a book on this offense, so I've got a box of them sitting over there, so if anybody wants one after, just, just let me know. But uh, So one thing that Sean McVay talks about with this offense is creating the illusion of complexity, and they do that through series of plays that start looking the same, but end up being different. You know, I think it's a good way to confuse the defense, get them out of position. You know, it's like Coach Bushman was just talking about with the jet sweep, if they're they're good enough to defend that. Well, you run a play that looks just like that, but is designed to, to counter their response to your original play. 
There's a quote from uh, Julius Caesar pretty much saying the same thing. Those designs are best which the enemy are entirely ignorant of until the moment of execution. They don't know what's going to happen until a few seconds into the play, and then it's too late for them. So with the Rams, the thing they do the best is they'll take their, their weak side outside zone play, so the base run on their offense. They'll marry that together with the wide receiver perimeter run schemes, the, the, the jet, the fly sweeps, and then with the reverses. And they'll play that together with the play action passing game and the screen game. So any of you guys who were here last night and heard Mike Riley talk about it, this is a lot of stuff he was talking about, pairing the zone running game with the fly sweeps, the reverses, the play actions off those, the boots off those. And they're going to do this all from under the center and from condensed formations. So this formation right here, they could run probably about 50% of their offense right from here. Most of their snaps, or about half their snaps are from this formation. Tight bunch to the right, all 11 players inside of the numbers, under the center. From two by two, they're going to have one tight end, the line is a wing. They're going to have one slot receiver as a, as a wing. They can vary the splits here, but most of the time you're going to have both outside receivers inside the numbers. You know, I think these help you for a few reasons with this style of offense. If you're under the center in your zone running game, it improves the halfback's vision. I think it's easier for him to get downhill. You know, if he's in the gun, he's coming straight parallel to the line of scrimmage. It's a full 90 degree angle he has to make to cut up. If he's under center, he's coming downhill to 45. It cuts that angle in half that he has to make to cut the ball up the field. You know, on the jet, the five sweeps, the quarterback can now turn his back and he can hide the ball from the defense. And then your play action passing game, he, again, he's turning his back to the defense, he's holding the ball out there longer, and the play takes longer to declare as a pass. You know, if you're in the gun and you're just giving a flash fake, well, a half second later, the defense knows it's a passing play. If you're under center, you're sticking the ball out there, you know, maybe that half second's lengthened to a second and a half or two seconds, and it's just more of a reaction you'll get from the defense, less time they have to defend the pass. And then with the condensed formations, I think having more players tight to the formation gives you more plays that you can run. I think it presents a lot for the defense to prepare for. You know, that tight bunch formation, you know, they can run a few different run schemes from there. They can run the, the fly sweeps. They can run the reverses. There's play actions. There's multiple movement passes. There's multiple screen options. There's, there's a lot the defense has to prepare for. And then in your running game, it gives, gives your receivers good blocking angles. You, know, you never have a scenario where you have a slot receiver who's having to come down and block an apex outside linebacker. The outside linebacker or nickel player is always going to be outside of him now. It's always going to give him a good angle. And then I think it simplifies coverages. You know, most defensive guys, when they install coverages, they're looking at, at base splits. I think whenever you distort the splits, there's you know, not many options for them to play. And I think it puts your receivers in favorable positions because now if they're tight to the formation, the corner's almost, almost always going to be outside and off. And almost everything's a spray release where he's pushing outside at him. And I think it just puts the, the corner in an awkward position. You know, as we'll go through it, most of the play action passing game, they can run off that same stem. And there's a lot of different routes that can run off of that. So getting into the base play here, the weak side outside zone is the basis of their offense. So it's an outside zone push scheme, or some people call it a mid zone scheme. So they're not trying to get the edge. The play side tackle, he's going to turn his butt to the hole. He's going to face outside. He's playing heavy with the inside hand. He's trying to turn that defensive end outside. They're trying to stretch the defense laterally and then cut the ball up behind their flow. The halfback, he's aiming out here for the ghost tight end. If there was a tight end here, that's his aiming point. He's reading outside in one gap at a time. So the C gap's open, which normally it's not. But if it is there, he's going to take it. If that's closed, now he's looking at the B gap and so on, it's working back down the line. And then, like I said, majority of the time, you're just trying to get the defense pushed here, the flow, and you're cutting the ball up back behind him. Your first look at it here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Decent amount of Seahawks clips on here. So they're on the weak side here, away from the tight end. Play side tackle, playing heavy with the inside hand, turn them outside. Plays best when you're running towards the, the one technique because you have that open B gap bubble. They're working here to reach the one. If they can reach him, the ball's gonna hit in the B gap, which is majority of the time we're trying to hit it. It doesn't hit this far out, out wide, as we'll see with most of the clips too often, but the backer shoots inside to be able to reach him too. And then you got the edge. Here's a little wrinkle they put on it, so Here's their two by two formation. 
They have a slot receiver here as a wing. He's going to take one step down and jab at the end. So from the same alignment, they're on a crack toss sweep where he's down blocking on the end. Tackle's pulling around for the corner. He's going to take that jab step, get him to widen, and now it just makes it easier for that tackle to get him turned outside. They reach the one technique, backer overruns it, and cut it behind his flow. Gingurui here is just looking at the C gap first. There's a defender here, so now he looks at the B gap, it's open, so he takes it. Here it is from the tight bunch. Again, running towards the one technique. So we'll see the end zone angle this time. The one technique fights across. They're able to cut off on the backside. So now you're cutting the ball here behind the one technique, getting these three defenders to flow, and then cutting it back behind them. On the play forward, you said that two, you said he jabs at him, so the DM like yeah. goes towards him. Yeah, well, I'll come back to it. Yeah, so he's gonna take just one jab step with the inside foot. Right there. And you're trying to get him to just widen a little bit and this makes it an easier job for the tackle. And then he's just working for the first defender outside of outside the tackle there. See it again for the end zone shot. Yeah, you see him trying to fight outside now because he thinks maybe they're running the crack top sweep. Here's the same thing. He's gonna use that, that same same crack block. Outside foot up, so now he can jab the inside foot. Reading outside in, again, like I said, it's best when they're in the over front and running weak side, so they're away from the tight end running towards the one technique. He's fighting across hard, they can reach the three, so now the ball's cut up in between them. The backside linebacker's pulling hard too, which is you know, what you want, so you get him pushed down here, and now you cut the ball back behind it. Just again, having the condensed formation helps because now you can cut off the safety, you can cut off the nickel where those guys aren't unaccounted for. So the outside foot up, this footwork for the receiver change with this crack toss to me versus this inside zone? I would probably have to look at it more. You know, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. This time they're going to cut the ball back behind the three. So if both the D tackles are flowing across, then you're going to cut the ball back behind all five of these defenders, behind the 5 0 linemen, and inside of the tight end cutoff block. This is why you need the tight end there. They're always going to run it either with the tight end or the backside to cut them off, or coming across in the slice block to kick them out. And the majority of the time, like I've already said in this play, you're just trying to stress the defense, you're not trying to get outside, and then you're gonna cut it back behind. Here's a look at the slice block here, bringing the tight end across this time. They're running towards the three. So when you're running towards the three, majority of the time, you're working off that backside one technique. You know, most of the time the ball is gonna hit wherever that B-gap bubble is on this play. So he's fighting across, now he's looking back here, this gap could be open, but now the one fights across. So again, brings it back behind the five linemen, inside of the kickout block. Receivers are here to cut off the nickel and safety. This just shows an example of one time the ball bounced. I mean, in the last two years, it's probably happened maybe three times to the Rams. They're only gonna bounce the ball if the end spikes into the B gap. And so even after that, he ends up cutting it back out. But that's why he starts his, his path wide. Because if that does happen, it's easier for him to stay on that path than to stay tight, or start tight, and then bounce outside. Okay, now we'll go into some of their, their wider sear perimeter run game. So here's the, the jet sweep or the fly sweep. They're always gonna leave the defensive end unblocked. Typically, they'll run this to a two receiver surface in a condensed formation where the outside receiver is going to arc for the corner. Your tight end here is arcing for the safety. Your play side tackle, he's responsible for stealing the linebacker. With the backfield and the initial step of the lineman, you're trying to sell zone away so you can freeze the interior of the defense. And really, if you can 
freeze the interior here and seal this guy, then you should have three on two on the edge. So the lion's going to take one step towards the zone action, and then they're going to peel back and want to seal. So he's trying to seal Bobby Wagner here, defensive ends left on block. Now you got him up to the safety, receiver out in the corner, you got three on two on the edge. You're just trying to get the interior of the defense to freeze just for a little bit, and now you got the advantage of the perimeter. Here's another look at it. This time, the linebacker that the tackle is responsible for, he's going to bump outside. So if him bumping out to the C gap, he knows the end's coming down to the B, so he can shoot outside of the, of the end at this point. And again, that's his responsibility. So wherever that backer goes, the tackle's going to get him. You freeze the interior here of the zone action. So with the backer going out, now you add on an extra blocker to the tackle. So now it becomes a four on three on the edge. And this is exactly what you're trying to get. You're trying to get that plus one on the perimeter where everybody else gets in here and they, they don't know what the hell's going on. Here's the other, the other perimeter run they have with the wide receiver. We heard uh, Mike Riley talked about it a little bit last night with the, the wide receiver end around. This time the quarterback is going to fake the handoff to the back, flip the ball to the receiver. The tight end's coming across. He's going to loop around the defensive end. He's going to block the will in the alley. The offensive line, they're responsible for stealing the Mike and the Sam. And they're going to block this play essentially like an inside zone play with the uncovered lineman peeling off to steal the Mike and the Sam. The point man in the bunch, he's coming across to cut off the free safety. You know, sometimes this block doesn't matter, but you know, if you spring it for a big play, that can be a touchdown block right there. If you look at the Chiefs this year in the, the AFC Divisional round against the Colts, Cherry Kill had a 36-yard touchdown run on this exact play because Travis Kelsey was able to get across and block the free safety to spring it for the long touchdown. Here's a look at it here. They almost always run this from this tight bunch formation. You fake the zone towards the bunch side, bring your outside receiver around, tight ends coming across the block for him. Fake the zone, flip it to him, trying to get that three on two here. Free safety makes a good play coming down, but you know if, if he's not as aggressive there, you can cut him off. There's a lot of big play potential with this one. Again, tackle center, they're climbing up here, seal the mic, seal the stand. Tight end comes across for the will. And then, so the thing that's, you know, it's a great way for them to get their playmakers on the perimeter, but then also it helps them a lot in the run game. You know, I think with that outside zone play, you can really stretch the box in here, stretch them laterally and work off their flow. But then when you add in some of the sweeps here and some of the reverse fakes, then you can stretch the, you know, the back end of the defense and remove some of that secondary help. So here they're gonna show the jet motion bring him across, and they're running their, their weak side outside zone play, bringing the tight end across to cut off the outside end. You see this guy, these guys jumping outside, and there's no one to, to fill in the backside cutback lane. And then another advantage of these condensed formations here, you know, they're in 11 personnel, defense is a nickel on the field, and now you have a nickel here playing close to the box. When they bring this guy across, now they're gonna push the point. So now instead of working here for the Sam and the Mike, they're working here for the nickel and the Sam, leaving him. So now you have your center blocking the nickel, and now this guy's the guy that's unblocked, having to chase the fly, putting him in an uncomfortable position. You get all these guys pushed down here, so you can cut the ball back behind their flow, and then because of that that fake right there, there's nobody in the backside lane. Do the same look now, now that the tight end starting on the backside. Again, the ball's gonna be cut back behind the defensive flow. They don't get as much of a reaction with the, the fake jet here, but again, it's gonna hold the backside linebacker just enough to help hold that cutback lane. 56 bumps outside the box, so now he can't fill here inside the tight end's cutoff block.
Here they're running the same thing with the fake reverse. Again, because they're running towards the bunch and bringing two guys back here, majority of the time they're gonna have to push the point, which you know, in this scheme, it turns your zone blocks almost into down blocks, so the ball is probably gonna be cut back, which you know, plays in favor with having this fake because you're stretching the defense on the backside, removing that support where the ball is probably gonna go. 10 minutes. So again, they're working front side double team, works here for the Sam. Back side double team, works for the Mike. The wheel is left unblocked. The fake is gonna handle him. Back side tackle ends up just burying this guy and ends up getting a two for one. But even if he set, still has to stay on this three, this guy is still affected enough by the fake that you have an open cutback lane that he can't fill in time. You know, and that block turns it into a touchdown, but even if he doesn't bury that guy, you're still getting eight yards there. Okay, so now we'll go into some of their play action game. Here's their base play action concept. They're really just trying to throw a glance route to this receiver. They can run it to or away from the run action. Most of their play action is going to be off the outside zone where they're going to bring the tight end across and have a six man slide protection. He's going to stem outside, push this corner again because he's in a tight split. Corner's probably outside. He can threaten him further with the spray release and then snap it back inside. Some receivers ran at five steps, some did it at six, some at seven, so I don't know exactly how they teach it. But it looks like they're trying to throw it on the highest angle possible, and there's a guy over him, then he'll flatten it out. On the back side, they're gonna have a bench route. He's spraying out to the numbers, 10 yards, pushing vertical, speed cut at 16, carry him to 18. The quarterback is first looking to the glance route off the, off the run action. If that's not open and he has time, he resets to the bench. If he feels like he doesn't have time, then he has a check down in the flat. So here's a look at it, away from the run action. Trying to pull up the second level of the defense, hit this route in between the second and third levels. You can see here how much being under the center helps this run action because you know, all the way until Goff catches from the back, it looks like run. Here's the same thing now, they'll, they'll run on the front side of the run action. You know, if you have a quarter safety sitting on top here now, he's gonna flatten it out so it looks almost kind of like a speed cut dig. Barely, it's the same route. If there's a guy over him, he just adjusts it on the fly, flattens it out. You pull up the second level of the defense, he can beat the third level of his route, and then you throw right in between them. Here it is with the fly motion action. So again, plays that start looking the same, they're different. They can come to this bunch formation, bring him across, and there's about four or five different plays they can run off that same action. Everybody here is sucked up by the run action. Now it's just an easy throw right here. Because of the tight split, you're in a favorable position. It's really a one-on-one -on -one with no help, and the receiver's already in position to win. Here's the same look now. They'll show the same. Jet motion across, and now they're throwing the glance route to the front red, front side receiver, the point man in the bunch. And this time they're going to run off the reverse action. Again, in this game we already saw they ran the reverse. They ran the outside zone off the reverse for a long touchdown. Now they're going to run the play action off it where you fake the zone, fake the reverse, and then they'll throw this glance route right behind it. I talked about earlier, you know, using that spray stem a lot. One thing that, that Sean McVay talks about is routes that start looking the same but are different. So off of this, you know, if the defense is sitting inside, if these guys, as soon as they recognize pass, if they're dropping, you know, to the seam area that the glance route's getting hit, they can use that same stem and then have them run a speed out to the sideline. And so if they think the glance is coming, corner's playing inside, these guys are dropping back to the zone, well now you still the speed out to the sideline. If the flat defender gets underneath a bit, back sticking out to the flat, that will be a check down. Here they get press. 
you know, if you get press coverage in the corner, the receiver is inside, the corner's probably thinking it's inside breaking route. So he's gonna try to undercut it when he breaks in that glance route. So here they'll make it look the same and they're gonna post corner. Inside release for his press, he breaks here, corner tries to undercut it, and now you have the advantage to throw that deep corner route. So we're on the back side receiver back in a deep cross concept. So if you get zone, it, it turns to a flood concept and you still have an option there. Okay, so here's their other base play action concept. Five. Okay. Go on. Deep cross, flood concept. The outside receiver getting spray, spray release the numbers. If he gets outside the corner, he could stay vertical and just pretty much run it like, a, like a, a wide release go. If the corner stays outside, he's going to push it skinny up the inside of the numbers on a skinny post. Backside receivers run a deep cross route to 18 to 22 yards. Quarterback, he's rating it high to low. Looking one to two, down to the flat three. You're ideally trying to run this play against single high coverage, trying to influence entry of the defense here, and then you're creating a two-on-one on the free safety and the flat defender. If he comes up on deep crosser, and the thinking is you have a deep shot, a one-on-one -on -one to the outside receiver, if he stays deep like he does, now you have two-on-one on, -one on the flat defender. If he's up here, now you have the deep crosser running in between the two. Now here's the same exact play off of that fly motion. In the same formation, same action, everything looks the same, but now it's a different play. Free safety stays deep, flat defender pulls up, throw the deep cross in the middle. Here it is off the reverse action. Again, same exact play, same exact protection. All you're doing is just window dressing, changing the action. And then, so an interesting thing with this play is they actually ran more counters off of this last year than actually running this concept. You know, I think this exact concept they ran maybe 11 or 12 times last year, but they had a few different counters that in total they ran, you know, 13, 14 times off these same stems. So here they're gonna show, you know, same tight bunch, jet sweep action. It's a good play against quarters. Normally he's running the deep crosser. He's gonna push across the field for 15 yards and then he's gonna sit if he's in zone, in, in open space, he can just stay there. If there's a defender near him, he's gonna pivot back away. You're on a deep field post by the outside receiver here. So this quarter safety, if he's sitting on this route, he can take the top off over it. Really, I mean, it's a good play if they're trying to match this deep crosser of linebackers. Against quarters, if that mic is flowing in the direction the deep cross normally goes, well now you just pivot back away from him you pull out the flat defender at the back and now there's a nice window there in between the mic and the sand. So the mic steps drop this way, now you just pivot back away from them, flat defender's pulled, big window in the middle. Here's a look at the same play. And Cooks is gonna sell the crosser, linebacker's trying to match it, he's gonna pivot back away. They have woods in the field post, so if the safety squats on it, you can take the shot over the top. The deep shot's more of an alert here, really. He's thinking, look to this fake cross back to the flat. If he sees the safety sit, then he can look for the, that field post. One of the ways that Seattle has tried to play this in recent years, they'll keep the free safety back on the deep cross, the, the deep post, I mean and then the hook defender is gonna play the deep cross. So this is one of the counters they have, you know, to counter that. He's gonna run that same fake cross route, but now because the corner's on him, there's not much space to put it back out into, but on the same, this fake cross occupying the hook defender, so now instead of running the deep post, you stem it the same and run a deep curl route. Flat defender pulled here, hook defender has his back to it. There's a, a wide open window right in between the two. I mean, again, KJ Wright just has his back in the play, doesn't even know where the ball's at. Sorry for all the, all the Seattle clips. <laughs> Here's another one that they used last year against Seattle, again, to you know, the counter that same response. We're in this two-by-two two formation. Majority of the time, they'll have Cup here, chip the end, and release to the backside flat. And now they'll show that same action 
the deep cross are gonna run on a steeper angle, try to get this guy out of here, and then Cuff's gonna release on a shallower crosser, about 10 yards, come underneath the fin. So he's running back to defend this crosser, he throw it right underneath the fin. Again, this play is working because it works off the other plays they've already set up in that game. Plays that are designed to start looking the same but end up being different. He runs back, you're in the cross right underneath him. Another way teams are going to play this is they'll have the free safety sit on this crosser and the corner's going to play over the top and just try to top this post route. So their answer to that is they're going to use the same spray stem. Push him vertical, thinking that the corner's gonna open up, try to play on top of it, and now they're gonna throw that 18 yard bench route to the sideline. Can you stem it in the same? Corner thinks it's a deep post, plays over the top, and now it opens up that shot to the sideline. And the hey. next thing they'll do off of this is they'll fake the run show like it's play action pass and then throw a screen back to the running back. So on these play side tackle is responsible for the defensive end wherever he goes. Guard center guard are releasing. First two out you block to the screen. The third guy out he's going to peel back. If there's somebody if there's a D line that's kind of sticky on him like he's not rushing hard up field you just stay on him. And I, excuse me I misspoke a little bit there. You're going to have three out and the backside tackle is going to come back and you know peel back in the backside. Tight end comes across, uh, blocks the backside end. Hey Taylor, Ty. Okay. Well, uh, you want to go through this one thing? Just, or? Yeah, yeah. we we'll watch this couple clips and then, yeah, I have more safe for the breakout session. I'll just show a few clips here. Here it is up the fly motion. You know, it works well because they're seeing run action and most of the time, you know, if you get beat by the play action pass, they're thinking, okay, I got to sprint back and defend these, these routes here and throw them right behind me. These guys run out of here, and they throw it back to the running back, there's no one there to play the screen. And then here it is off the fake reverse action. Again, these whole series of plays, they can run it all off the, with the fake reverse, they can run it without the, without the fake, they can run it with the jet sweep fake, it all fits together. And then so my breakout session, I'll go over some of their boot stuff, some of the half boots, some of the screens they have off that. You know, if anybody wants to just you know talk about that or any of the other stuff they do, then just come over to it. We'll uh, we'll have the four speakers just went. We'll be in the breakouts. So I think uh, Trey, are you cool staying here? Yeah. We can have Trey here. Um, I'll go in classroom 51. We were in yesterday. We'll have. Uh, Jason in, in 33, and then Coach Bushman will be in, in classroom 35. So take about 10 minutes, get set up, and then break out to those sessions.